Welcome back to Flingles Briar. I'm Gareth. Coming to you today from the uh, Flint Hills of Kansas. Which are, in my opinion, probably the single best area in Kansas. As geographical areas go. I think they're the more interesting and more scenic and that sort of thing than a lot of other places. Here you have the, the, the Flint Hills themselves, the tall grass prairie, the wooded areas down in the, uh, the little hill valleys or whatever you want to call them. It's uh, camping season again, finally, here in Kansas, as far as I'm concerned anyway. It's mid-October, and uh, this was, this area where I'm camping is not where I was planning on camping. I was planning on camping at the place I camp at more often in the fall and winter. But I got out there last night, and I, I thought there might be some competition for the, the one camps, campsite I wanted. But I figured that if somebody happened to be in that spot, I'd just like camp in a, one of the other spots. There's two main spots I like, camp, like to camp out there. Not only was there somebody in the uh, first spot, but there was somebody in the second spot. Basically, any other spot that would have worked out there was occupied. And I was quite surprised. <laughs> I don't ever remember being out there in October with that many other people out there. This weekend is, uh, it's, uh, I wouldn't exactly call it typical fall weather, but it is super nice. It's about 80 degrees, which usually I would think is a little bit on the warmer than I like side, but at least in the shade with the breeze, it's just, it's absolutely lovely. So I can't really complain at all. And last night it wasn't wasn't particularly cool, cold, anything like that. And it was just very nice weather. I'm out here having some uh, Cornell and Deal Mountain Camp in my uh, Richmond Bulldog State Pipe. Puffing away, you're in the wind, of course. which we tend to do a lot here in Kansas. But, uh, yeah, next month, just about another month here, um, middle of uh, November, I'm planning on going out to the Elk River Trail. That's between Independence and uh, Elk City, Kansas. Doing a little backpacking trip. It's a 15 mile trail, so I go do it out and back, so it's a 30 mile trip. Spend a couple nights out on the trail. Really come to enjoy that, that uh, trip in November. You know, no bugs. Nice and cool, generally speaking. Two years ago, it was a little cooler than I would have chosen, I guess, because it was temperatures in the day were hovering around freezing. And obviously, when the sun went down, it got colder than that. Which I camp in the winter all the time, but it's a little different when you're you know, when you're backpacking and you have to carry all your gear on your back, so you, know, you don't want to be too loaded down with extra warm clothing and stuff like that. 
But um, yeah, after the thing that happened three weeks ago or whatever it was with Hurricane Helene and my uh, my Appalachian Trail hike that didn't happen. We still have a little backup backpacking trip. I was plan planning on probably doing it anyway, but definitely want to make it happen now. But I was just thinking earlier about how uh, you know, I talked about like the environment here, the Flint Hills, how I enjoy it. And that environment of the uh, Appalachian Mountains there in uh, like North Carolina and Tennessee. It was a ecosystem that I was really looking forward to experiencing in an immersive way of hiking through it, sleeping in it, that sort of thing. Which didn't work out this time around, but uh, just something I qu hadn't really experienced before. I'd, I'd done a very, very little bit of hiking. I'm talking like a little short day hike, if you can even call it that, up in uh, near Emmitsburg, Maryland, which, it, it, you know, it's further north and not as high as the... Uh, as the mountains are there in uh, North Carolina and Tennessee. But just the trees that grow there and just, I don't know, the whole thing, you know, it's just, it's just something I hadn't quite experienced firsthand before. And I was just really hungry to get out and, and, and get into it there. But yeah, that, that uh, horrible hurricane had different plans and had different plans for a lot of people's lives and ways a lot more important than my stupid hike but uh anyway yeah coming from somebody who you know lives in Kansas and I'm familiar with the the environments we have here and like out in Colorado up in the mountains there where I've spent a good deal of time hiking and climbing and all that kind of stuff. You know, the, the Eastern Mountains are are definitely a different animal. And I was really, I mean, compared to the Rockies, obviously the Appalachians are pretty short by comparison. And they're more rounded and tree covered and all that, but I was impressed. I mean, they're they're very rugged. They're and they're big. You know, they're not as tall as the Rockies and all that sort of stuff. But they're still big mountains and rugged mountains. And if you go hiking in them, you definitely experience a lot of elevation gain going up and down and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, I'm hungry to get out there again. I don't know when it, when it will happen. Getting out there takes more doing, obviously, because it's further away. But uh, yeah, I was really uh, I I really enjoyed my time in North Carolina. You know, outside dealing with hurricane type stuff. I feel like I, um, probably the best way I could put it is, I think I, and I may have mentioned this before, but I think I suffered from a lot of, growing up with a lot of uh, influence from kind of northern propaganda. And by that I mean... I grew up with some opinions, I don't know if that's quite the right word, but 
I grew up with a with a rather negative view of the South, um, and you know, I I remember thinking that there were three states in the country that I was never gonna you know visit, let alone ever live in, and those were Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama. I guess I just saw saw those states as you know the the absolute heart of darkness of the South or something like that for whatever reason. But it was stuff that I, you know, was led to believe, I guess. And the funny thing is, I actually lived in Alabama for <laughs> about six months and visited and spent more months there than that, even. Visited a number of times and uh, even lived there for a little while back when I was in the with that group of Franciscans. And uh, I have to admit, in a lot of ways, as much as I'm a, a lover of the north, you know, things northern, the north woods, the, the canoe country up north, and all that sort of stuff. From a cultural perspective, I actually feel like I would probably feel more at home if I had to move somewhere. I'd probably feel more at home culturally speaking in the south than I would in, in some parts of the north so I'm glad that you know now that I'm well I guess I some of this started happening when I was in my 20s but I'm glad that you know now that I'm in my 40s I've discovered that I actually quite like the south But yeah, I don't know. I just think it was just it was just what I was led to believe. I was just led to believe that and yeah, there were things that went on in the south which were bad. No doubt about that. But I don't know. That doesn't mean you need to look at a whole part of our country as some sort of negative thing, you know. You know, just random thoughts. Me sitting out here, reflecting on things. I was sit, been out here uh, today listening to uh, the audible version of uh, John Keel's book, The Mothman Prophecies. Which this would be like the third time I've listened to that. I wanted to listen to it because, you know, just like two weeks ago, I, we were briefly in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. So I wanted, and you know, it's October spooky season and all that. I figured it was fitting to re-listen to that book. Now having actually been to the town. K-State, my alma mater, is playing West Virginia tonight. Football. Yeah, just out here enjoying this, I don't know if you could really call it Indian summer, but it is a little bit uncharacteristically warm today. We did have a frost five nights, I don't know, four, five, six nights ago, something like that. So I don't know if that quite uh, uh, constitutes Indian summer or not, but Anyway, it's quite nice out here. Not exactly what I thought I was signing up for, for an October camp out, but hey, I'll take it. Sometimes you get crappy surprises like having a hurricane blow through and tear everything up and kill people and destroy stuff and ruin your hike. And sometimes you have weather surprises where it's not exactly what you're expecting, but really beautiful weather, so... I guess it goes both ways. But anyway, thanks for and thanks for joining me. I'm glad falls here. One of my well, probably overall my favorite 
uh, season. I enjoy winter too, but winter does have a certain harshness that can get kind of old. But thanks for joining me. I'm Flint Hills Briar. Flint. I'm Gareth with Flint Hill. Flint Hills or Flint Hill? Flint Hills Briar. I guess I say it so much, I almost forgot exactly if it has nuts or not. I'll see you next time.